Hey everyone, so I got a request in the comments to talk about the Abramelin operation. So here it is, me talking about it. So the Abramelin operation is an operation whose end goal is the full knowledge and conversation of one's own holy guardian angel. And that idea of a holy guardian angel, just to take a quick look at it, it's got different ideas behind it. It is considered in Catholicism to just basically be a guardian spirit for you. And in other contexts, it's considered, well, one's own tutelary spirit, which is to say a being who is specific and exclusive to you, who's going to help you out and provide you all of these benefits. So what are some of these benefits? Why would one have a holy guardian angel? Well, there are different uh, forms of thinking about this, I do recommend a book from Nephilim Press, and for whatever reason, Nephilim Press uh, only made 500 copies of this book, which to me is crazy. Um, I'm really kind of getting tired of occult stores, you know, curating to an occult book market, or occult presses doing uh, that, occult publishers. So the nice thing about the advent of the internet is that you can get that book via I want to say it's archive.org where you can check it out and just, you know, make as many notes as you can and have as much of information as you can glean from that. I do recommend reading that book as a good overview of the Holy Guardian Angel, specifically Scott Stenwick's um, for practical working. He, it's a collection of essays, the book is, and his take about how to go about in a, in a methodical manner Stenwick is amazing for like just laying stuff out in a methodical manner. Okay, do this, do this, do this, do this. Very, very practical uh, author. And, um, you know, I, I consider him to just be a really excellent mind when it comes to all of that sort of thing. So, so the whole idea, as for, and there's other essays in there as well about why you would uh, go about that or what the experience is like. And I'll talk a little bit about that towards the end. But mainly the reason you would go about getting this holy guardian angel is this spirit is various reasons why uh, to have conversations with it, with a, with a celestial being, some presumably one that has a lot more wisdom than, than you, because if you're going with the great chain of being, then this is a being that is above humanity by and large, you know, I mean, except maybe, maybe like the great great holy beings are, are uh, you know, on a level with them. But the main reason you would do that is for, for a lot of reasons. First of all, get to gain the wisdom. Uh, another reason you would want to acquire full knowledge and conversation with, with such a being is that you can uh, have this as a little bit of a buffer between you and maybe a more dangerous spirit, right? So for example, um, you, if you were to speak with, you know, let's say any other kind of spirit, you could say an elemental, you know, or maybe an infernal spirit, you would have this being as having the authority, uh, you know, a, a divine authority, or at least celestial, right, coming from the divine to keep that other being in check, right? And to also work with you in terms of like coordinating a whole bunch of stuff. So I do want to say that for me personally, my holy guardian angel, I, I specifically not only request other angels that I have sort of, I don't know if you, if you're like Claire, whatever, you probably see like literally thousands around me. It's just how I roll, right? I prefer, I, you know, some people don't like that. I'm, I'm totally comfortable doing that. Um, but I do say cooperate and coordinate with each other, right? And specifically my holy guardian angel, I'm not saying that he calls the shots, but he does have this um, this extra authority to keep things running, right? So, and to and to you know to see the greater good come about. So, what is so that's the end goal of this Abramelin operation, right? So, what is it? So basically, it's a six to month. Uh, six to 18 month operation where you are more or less, you're not completely isolating yourself because that is a thing that I don't want to make, make it seem like you are completely shut away and blah, blah, blah. The, the person, um, Abra Mellon, uh, 
who the operation is named after. Uh, he may have been like one of these desert hermits. Uh, sometimes he's also known as Abraham, which is confusing because the person who wrote the book, the work is Abraham of Fawn Worms, but it's a different Abraham. So we just distinguish, we say one is Abramel and the other, you know, you get the idea. But he, he was a bit of a, of a hermit. So, so maybe the thinking is, well, we need to be that kind of extreme. That's just not going to work. In today's world, today's economy, most of us are householders. Most of us need to make an income. Unless you're independently wealthy, fine, then you might have time for this. But a lot of the things that it calls for are mo methods and modes of isolation. Sometimes they tell you don't engage in this, don't engage in that. If, you, if you're reading the actual text, I think that the the thing that goes without saying is that if you're going to use this ritual or do this operation in a modern context, you must adapt it for the modern world. It's just how it is. And I'm sure that, you know, other generations past have realized that they've had to do that with stuff that was old to them. But it's a six to 18 month operation. And I'm not saying six to 18 month, I really should say six or 18 month, depending on the translation of the, the manuscripts. And like a lot of the medieval grimoires, it's... It, there's differences in the manuscripts that were produced. The one, the version of the manuscript I, I recommend, which is kind of a, a good critical edition, I would say, um, or maybe maybe it's not critical, but they're they're taking they're sampling from a bunch of different texts. Is the one written by uh, Georg Dane, D E H N, and I'll try to remember to put the links in the notes here, but. In that version, it's definitely 18 months. And that's how long it took me. Now, why did it take me that long? Could I have done it faster? Could I have done it better? We'll get into all of that. So, but first, the whole idea about the actual nuts and bolts of it is more or less kind of isolate yourself to pray regularly. And what is the prayer? It's very simple. I am asking you, God, to please send me my holy guardian angel in full knowledge and conversation. And, you know, how long is that? How long do you pray? You know, what, what should I exactly say? I, I recommend that exact kind of phrase just because, you know, it's very simple. God can do it. You're asking God to send the angel for this reason, right? Not just, not just for a moment, but full knowledge and conversation as in basically at will. At will knowledge and conversation. So... What did I do? Well, uh, and I'll link to this as well. There is a great conversation on witches and wine with um, with the magician Scarlet Magdalene. And she talked about what she did. And she basically, you know, laid it out like you're not going to have this, you, you know, most of us aren't going to. One of the things the ritual calls for is an oratory, a specific room set, ar set aside for prayer. Well, uh, you know, if you're living in a studio apartment, can you really do that sort of thing? That this place that isolates you from other foot? No, that's just not going to happen. So what can you do? Well, she talks about going to her car to prayer, uh, to, to pray over lunch. And I did that. Um, sometimes, sometimes I went to like this, this room in the, you know, company's building that I worked in. Um, I would, there was like a little private room. I would do that. However, I could get away to go pray, isolate myself, blah, blah, blah. I did that. And I also did that at home. So I tried to do it about, I tried to do it three times a day, two or three times a day. I think I started with twice, you know, morning and evening, stuff like that. And then I upped it to like three times. And basically just being very sincere. So that was one of the things I did. Another thing that I did on top of that, so this is where, let me pause here and say, so I definitely did the Abramelin operation in the sense of an evolving operation to have my uh, holy guardian angel, you know, you know, come in full knowledge and conversation. Another thing that I did, though, was that I didn't really kind of limit myself to to that. I also engaged in Aleister Crowley's Liber Samex, so I'll go ahead and, ex you know, get into that. And that is a version of the headless uh, ritual or headless rite or bornless rite that is from the Greek magical papyri. And due to the translation of 
the way the words get are ordered in Greek, it's also known as the PGM. And that was a nice, uh, it's, it's, it's a very powerful ritual if you haven't done it before. It's in the top three uh, kinds of magic that I've done in terms of power. Um, so that one was, uh, so that's very loud in terms of like my clear audience, like I vibrate the words and it just, it gets very loud. Um, not quite 747, but definitely lawnmower loud almost, you know, on, kind of on that level. Um, in terms of clear audience, not in terms of my ears actually ringing when I'm done. So I would do that. And I think I, I started out doing more of that and then just shifted more into Avermel and proper. I kind of wanted to throw everything but the kitchen sink at it, basically, to use an expression. I wanted to do as much as I could and try different things and just see really what was working. So... If I had to do it over again, I would probably say Liber Samic probably could do that very well. So that's a ritual that uh, Alistair Crowley modified from the PGM. And really the main thing I would have done is just specifically where it has like, you know, it's, it's an exorcism ritual. So why would you do an exorcism ritual? Another quick tangent. You would do that to just um, basically anything else, including your own ego, you're trying to like get that out. So that way there's room for the angel to come in, right? You know, anything, any, you know, anything else, any other like egotistical stuff, blah, blah, blah. You're trying to like set that aside. I want my heart open for the angel to come in and be able to have this ongoing conversation. So, uh, so at any rate, there's a point in the, that bornless right, the Liber Samic, where it has the exorcism thing that you're telling, you know, blah, 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 please get rid of whatever spirit. And instead, I would instead just recommend saying, Holy Garden Angel, please come in, something like that, right? Um, please, please appear, that sort of thing. Send to me my Holy Guardian Angel, blah, blah, blah. Or my tutelary, tut tutelary spirit, if you don't like that term. So, so that was the process, and I did that over and over again. Now, I wound up being a fool and stopping uh, uh, occasionally when I had what I would call a false insight. So when you're you're in the the mix of that pretty strongly, and by the way, there are in the in that um, Holy Guardian Angel book, uh, one of the authors, and I'm I'm not going to remember who. It's been a while since I read it. He talks about how he achieved that state within two weeks. I don't disbelieve this person because I think there's a lot of stuff when you're when you're very much like undone as that author describes he was um then you are you're definitely like you know if you if you're kind of shattered then you're open to a lot already kind of emotionally not me it took me a while <laughs> maybe I was maybe I'm more stubborn maybe it's all the fixity in my chart but uh, I have a lot of fixed signs, Leo rising, Taurus new moon, blah, blah, blah. But, but what I found it, but it, eventually it, it came through. So what, but what, what were these false insights? Well, uh, as you're going along, you might start picking up on certain kinds of symbolism, right? And for me, I remember like one of the big ones was, okay, I got this, this very important sort of, um, visual symbol of like the 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 symbol for the sun is basically a circle with a dot in the middle that's also the symbol for the monad right but we'll just stick with the symbol for the sun so the thing that the way it really struck me was it was like very powerful because you notice like the eye has the circle with the dot in the middle right and we think of like um you know a flower opening up and in the middle is the pollen for the bee to come. And there was a whole lot of symbol about the goldenness of the sun coming in and that being symbolic of the tears of the, the Egyptian god Re or Ra, depending on how you, you're pronouncing it. They think it's Re, but that those tears actually being the being gold, you know, golden honey, you know, that sort of idea of just this boom, 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 a whole bunch of associations and you can get into the idea of, of ambrosia and nectar and stuff like that. And I forget the, the Hindu term, but there's a similar concept there. But anyway, 
it was pretty cool. So I was getting like a lot of this, right? And the thing is, is like, when you're going through, it's like you get this energy, this rev up of energy, and then you see something, and it's like really important, blah, blah, blah. And then you think, oh, that's it, blah, blah. And it's not, you know, you need to keep going. So, so anyway, when it happened, uh, so let me, let me just kind of skip ahead to a lot of things. So number one, just modify the ritual. That's my recommendation. Number two is don't stop for false insights. Number three, so let's say, let's say you're doing abramelin proper. So you're going to be doing a lot of things that are going to involve a lot of sensory stuff. So one of the things that I do recommend is the abramelin oil. And I don't recommend making it exactly, but it's basically the same oil, the same kind of anointing oil that is you that was was used in the temple, the temple in Jerusalem. And the priests would make this and they would pour it over somebody. And the only and I'll go ahead and link in the video to Benabel Wen. She did a really great job talking about the importance of respecting the tradition, like you know, me, I'm not a Jew, and uh, but you do want to, so you want to respect the Jewish tradition of, okay, this is, the Exodus literally says, do not, it's not for somebody who is not like a priest, let alone somebody who's not even Jewish. So I went ahead and uh, made a, a modified version along the lines of what she had, and she recommends star anise and um, just a, a, a couple of other tweaks, so it's not the exact same thing. But it's really good. Um, it's very aromatic if you haven't made it. I have a little bit sitting up in a mason jar, literally a few feet away. But, you know, it's you don't need to see it. It's the same. It's, it's, it's more fun making it, right? And she talks about infusing the, the cinnamon. And there's, there's a Ceylon cinnamon and then regular cinnamon you're supposed to use. But it's really nice. And you put it on. It's very aromatic. The only thing I recommend, I'm tinkering with her tinkering, is to recommend increasing the amount of uh, olive oil that you use. You need about three times as much in terms of the ratio. So however much you're going to make, and uh, you know, make sure you just put in way more olive oil. And I think that's the actual blind, as it were. So like, sometimes in magic, there are these things known as blinds where, okay, if you kind of know what's going on, you can kind of see that this isn't right and what you need to do to fix it. But if you don't know, then, you know, you're just going to say, oh, it says this, do this, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I think that that's the blind in terms of like um, trying to infuse this, this beautiful, these beautiful, um, uh, I'm not sure if cinnamon is an, I think it's a, it's a spice. And it, yeah, I mean, it's a spice, but like, I think star anise as well. But if you're infusing these spices anyway, by just heating them at a, at a low simmer, I'll, it, she explains it in the video you're definitely going to need more olive oil in order to just keep it from being like this mush, right? It's not going to, it's not going to work. So, so anyway, um, so you're doing that. Now, why are you, why are you incorporating? So, oh, let me talk about the incense first. So the incense, I do recommend thinking about changing it up from the way the book describes it. I'm not going to go into that. It's been a long, long time, but the book will talk about how to make the incense. The one thing I would recommend, I actually bought this as opposed to making it. And the supplier who I got it from said, well, the one thing is now endangered. So I don't know if I can get that. And I'm just like, why are you buying this thing? <laughs> That's It's an endangered plant. Just make something different. So instead I wound up, so I, after, after having bought that and then trying to order more and then getting that back, I was like, oh, I didn't know. So I instead got like a solar kind of um, incense from this supplier. So just be advised that maybe the actual incense and go ahead and take her with that too. You know, the goal is not to destroy the ecosystem so you can have your beautiful magical thing. The goal is to have maybe both, you know, so, okay. So getting towards the end, what I actually did wind up doing is I did get the whole burlap sack because there's like a week or so at the end where you're supposed to like kind of have time off and you're supposed to like get yourself really sensorially engaged in the whole process. So I did that. I mean, I went all out. I got the burlap sack. I'm itchy all over, blah, blah, blah. But, and I also um, was fortunate enough to have um, uh, a little bit of silver. 
So just bear in mind, like when you're thinking about this in terms of like, what do I actually want to do? Think about what actually economically makes sense, because I will talk about alternatives in just a second. But one of the things I would say is that, uh, but at any rate, let me finish up the experience and then I'll come up with additional recommendations. So at the end, you are supposed to be able to see the Holy Guardian Angel sigil uh, in silver. And I had that ready to go. So I've talked about this on a podcast, uh, on the Bledsoe Sedzo podcast, but one of the things that I was able to do at the end, it was like I was, when it finally happened, I, I knew it. And I didn't just know it, like there was this massive energetic shift. Um, that's just, that's all the only way I can describe it. I, some of it, and there's just this big vision and seeing the angel and all of that. Um, it was very beautiful. It was very raw. It's a little bit like SEX. So um, when it's good, <laughs> when it's really good. Um, but it was, it was, it was, you know, wonderful. But then I wanted to, I had read about and prepped to be able to see the sigil in this little plate of silver that my wife had inherited. And so I did that. And so I looked at it and it was like, and I've described this before, but I could actually see the thing. It was like, if, so, if you take a picture and you kind of, you know, close your eyes, like if, let's say it's night and you get the flash photography going on, and you close your eyes and then you still see the flash no matter where you point your eyes to. Um, it was like that. So I could see it, except instead of just like a single flash point, it was like the entire sigil was there, right? So that's what I, that's what I experienced. And it was really beautiful. And, um, the only thing I would say is that afterwards I was still like a little bit of a loopy state and I got a little, you want to make sure not to blow your life up. I'll just say that much. Okay. So having said all that, do you, what are some of the better alternatives? Because we do need to think about how we're all kind of on a budget, blah, blah, blah. So Abramelin, it does have like a lot of these external things. You got the, the, you know, oil, you got the incense, you've got the silver, you got the burlap sack, you can do a whole bunch, right? And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that if you can afford it and you're being ecologically conscious and, and ethical, generally speaking. So other things that you might consider doing uh, would be to just do a nightly prayer, right? So with, the, with Abramelin, you're doing a prayer two, three times a day. You might also be adding in the um, the lesser invoking ritual of the hexagram or the greater one. Either one, so you're invoking the sun and or Tiferet together if you're doing the whole tree of life thing. So I would recommend, you know, maybe doing that if you have time. You know, that's this is the thing, right? It's like Abramelin, it's it is very much intensive in terms of time, but you're taking that time and you're compressing what might otherwise be years um, of, a, of a slower process where you would just, you would, you would exclude all the other stuff where, you know, you would, inc you might combine prayer with the lesser invoking ritual of the hexagram or the greater one for the sun and Tiferet respectively. Um, I do recommend Scott Stenwick again because he has a faster version of the LRH uh, and the GRH, frankly. Well, I think just the LRH, but for the sun in particular. Um, so check out his site. And uh, But you, you could combine that and then you could have all this lead up to that final week where everything comes together and you're really pushing it. Um, but you can also just do a slower thing. And the thing about going slower is you don't know when it's going to happen and you don't know how it's going to happen. But there are people who I'm pretty sure just spontaneously have this, right? Or they have it after praying. Or I wouldn't be at all surprised to hear saints having something like this, right? So the, the idea there is, um, I want to say it's Agrippa. I know that Aaron Leach, he talks about it, where you're just... Um, making a simple nightly prayer, or maybe morning and night, whenever you have time to God to say the exact same thing. Please send my holy guardian angel, blah, blah, blah. So the difference is, one, there's a whole lot of extra steps, but it's a compre compressed time frame. That would be the Abramelin and going through that. 
Again, I'm just talking about the basic structure of that. The actual thing is more involved. I don't expect, you know, I, 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 you can't expect me to give like the entire summary. It's just, it's just too much, but get the book. You know, I do, I, I highly recommend the, the Georg Dane book, but the other one is to just simply pray, pray that this, this non Abramelin version of Holy Guardian Angel work is to just pray and make that prayer and pray from your heart and keep it simple. And again, the main focus is on full knowledge and conversation. Why? Because in addition to praying, you're just going to want to talk to about, talk with your holy guardian angel about everything, right? Especially early on, right? Later on, okay, you kind of come to an understanding, right? And you, you, you might call them up as needed, right? Unfortunately, according to people, sources like Crowley, you're not going to do that if you need to cross the abyss because you're beyond the abyss, right? When you're, because the, 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 the abyss is the HGA supposedly isn't, you know, isn't there to help you during that part because you're literally undoing everything and you're, you're uniting, you're going through the process of, of, of a much more cosmic uh, working and not this individual stuff. So one other thing, one other thing I should mention is that um, the HGA, at least using the the current Western tradition, it is associated with with this idea of the true will. I'd say you can find it without that, but um, you know, do the work, right? Figure out who you are, what you're about, blah blah blah. The HGA can definitely help you with that, and he can help or she, you know, depending on or, you know, whatever non-binary term the angel may present as, um, or pronoun, I should say, uh, your, your HGA may have a means to try to help you carry that out and to, to deepen it, right? So that's what the conversation, conversation is going to go whichever way it is. You know, I'm not going to uh, prejudge that. I'm just, so I'm really intending to more talk about uh, that. So stuff that the Holy Guardian Angel has been associated with. It's been associated with Tiferet on the Tree of Life. Uh, so just finishing up the thing I was previously saying about uh, the process. So you would pray, if you're doing the non abramelin version of this, you would pray maybe nightly, maybe twice nightly, but sincerely and live a good and moral life. And then somewhere down the line, right? Years down, the Holy Guardian Angel should appear to you in full knowledge and conversation. Now, this is a little different from like um, your HGA showing up and, um, you know, saving you from something, right? Like, like you're in a car wreck, right? Yeah, that's great. I mean, perfect, right? Thank you so much. But that's different from being there and being in this ongoing dialogue with that, right? So one of the things that uh, Crowley in his book 777, he associates... Uh, Malkut with the vision, which is to say the lowest of the Sephirot, he equates the, or he associates that with the, or he has a correspondence of that with the vision of the Holy Guardian Angel, which is wonderful, right? But you're still here in the physical world, right? It's like that's something that you can aspire to, right? And then if you go up the tree of life, blah, blah, blah. And so that's what these more lodge based systems are about. Okay, so so you would be doing this. So that's why what the prayer is for, and that's why I specifically say full knowledge and conversation. Angel, come and you know, send me your angel. Full knowledge and conversation. So okay, let's say you do that. So then, who knows? It's supposed to be years plural when that happens. Um, I don't know how long that would be. I haven't done it. I did kind of a beginning with Liber Samic. I think I did at, at towards the very end. I was definitely doing both. I was doing doing the LRH, I was doing the Libersomic, and I was doing the regular prayers to God, and just sincerely, and over and over again, very emotional. <laughs> it was quite, it, it literally was an ordeal. All right, so I've mentioned that, uh, I've mentioned Libersomic. I did say since, uh, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't say that I did have a prayer. Um, it's in my 111 Enochian prayers, the Enochian language prayers. I did my best to have an Enochian language prayer for the same thing that God would send. And I, I forget the exact terms I use, but I use there's guard 
And I think I specifically say his spirit. It's been a while since I've looked at it, but you can find it. Search 111 Enochian, pr Enochian prayers and just ask uh, God to, you know, to do it that way. You know, do it in Enochian. Why not? Right. What channel is this again? So I don't uh, consider that to be the end all be all, by the way. I think that there are probably a lot of different approaches that you can use. I think the thing is that, you know, philosophically, a lot of folks in the West have been trying to do that to to have this happen. A, so that it makes it easier doing working with any other spirit. Um, B, there's these implications from Crowley that it's associated with the true will. Probably, I would say, yeah. Um, but even approaching this idea of the true will in itself is the true will. So, you know, um, and what you need to get there to get to this point where you're do where you're feeling in the zone and you're doing the true will while well, even trying to do that and trying to get the, the necessities. So the, all these secondary things are, I mean, who knows, right? It's a, it's a trouble with thinking about true, uh, will is in terms of like the ultimate thing. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying there are drawbacks to everything. All right. So there are multiple things. So I've tried to put that out there as, a, as another method that is maybe more powerful or at least of more interest to people who are into Enochian uh, than, just, than just simply praying. Um, maybe, maybe praying in Enochian language might be, a little, might be a little bit more efficient. All right. So, so let me think if there's anything else. The other thing, by the way, I've mentioned uh, crossing the abyss in passing. Um, those of you who saw me do the uh, scry the aether of zip, some people have equated that with crossing the abyss. I would say Zax, the aether of Zax, certainly feels abyssal. Um, it's not comfortable, <laughs> uh, but you get through it, right? And then you get to the Aether of Zip. And it was interesting that of all the different uh, thumbnails that I could choose, and I don't like, you know, go through and find the exact timestamp. I take the three that I, they, I do this on my phone. So I'm no muss, no fuss. But there were three little thumbnails that I could pick and all of them had like some kind of like blurriness to them. And it was funny that that was for the one that was, you know, the first of the Supernals uh, in, or the Supernal Aethers, if you're using that model. Um, but anyway, that's the second of the major tasks that um, at least Aleister Crowley listed uh, when he was writing about some of the main tasks of a magician. I think uh, probably working on the heart with the heart is probably more important and really doing that reckoning. So, so don't get me wrong, all of this is the heart, all of this is, um, all of it's important, let's put it that way. But I think that even after, I, th I mean, there's always more, right? It's like you, you reach the top of the mountain and what do you see? What are you able to see from that mountain? A higher mountain. <laughs> so, and you also need to live your life. So bear that in mind. I'm just going to reiterate that to close out. Uh, as with anything else, don't blow up your life to, you know, I mean, if you need, if you see where you need to go, that's great, but don't just, you know, decide everything needs to change in an instant. And that's something that I fell into. Um, so instead, really take time to integrate, take some downtime. And that's certainly been helpful to me when this operation was kind of, uh, this most recent one was was put, the brakes were put on that by, by the divine. He said, nope, just stop, pick it up later. And I said, okay. <laughs> And so what I've been doing since then is just, um, uh, I've been getting a haircut. <laughs> I've been chilling out. I've been trying to just ease back into just, you know, normal day-to-day -day life. Um, because the thing is, is that when you're doing these rituals, you're really opening yourself up a lot. There's a lot of energy. It feels very good. Um, it's like, you know, and just any any one experience that gets so much like that, it's hard to like, not take that as like the ultimate, the be all end all. Um, but it's if if you remember that uh, old movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off, where he's talking about how um, the, the uh, Ferris Bueller is talking about the character Cameron Fry and how if he uh, he's gonna like, 
Cameron, whenever he goes out, he's going to marry the first woman he lays and he's going to, she will have given him what he has built up in his mind as the end all be all, right? And you can do that with magic too. You can do that with anything, with, su with success. Oh, I'll be the most successful person ever, blah, blah, blah. And you're forgetting that you have to, you come into this world, you have to honor a lot of yourself, all parts of yourself. So I think all of that is, is just, you know, normal advice to say, okay, if you, if, if you're, if you have this experience, it's easy to kind of get caught up in the, you know, the, the feeling of it all. And, and because the feeling is so strong, therefore it must be true. Well, you know, it's probably, you're probably being pointed in a very important direction, but in terms of just making that happen as quickly or as, as seemingly at will as you can with a magical operation, those are two different things. So just bear that in mind. All right. So I definitely didn't intend for this to go for 36 minutes. Uh, love you all. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I will reply as usual. Um, but yeah, just, just good luck. And you know, that's about it. So, all right. Talk to you later. Bye.